Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast Season 2 Episode 19 Hi there, it's Jeremy again from Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast and I had an opportunity to watch the entire second episode of Season 1 of the new Hawkeye series on Disney+. Plus. Hawkeye, the series, based on the Marvel Comics superhero Hawkeye, centering on the adventures of young Avenger Kate M. Bishop, who took on the role after the original Avenger, Clint Barton. Stay tuned. Video Gamers Oasis, playful podcast. Discussions on my favorite games, movies, TV shows, anime, comic books, collectibles, and other fun content for gamers and geeks. I'm your host, Jeremy. Welcome to the show. Hi, this is Jeremy from Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast, and I want to take a few brief seconds to tell you about an amazing service that I use to make podcasts. You know, I'm a, I really like to talk about gaming and geek uh, entertainment, uh, the different types of things that appeal to a certain genre, and I finally have a vehicle where I can express my creative ideas, my musings through my podcast microphone. And I want to tell you about Anchor.fm. What is Anchor.fm, you ask? Well, Anchor is a free, beginner-friendly platform for podcast creation, containing tools that allow users to record and edit audio, arrange it into podcast episodes, publish podcasts to listening platforms, and monetize content by collecting listener contributions or adding advertisements into episodes. I highly recommend if you have an idea for a podcast, why don't you go over to Anchor.fm, sign up in the link below, and begin your podcast career. Hello, welcome back to Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy. This uh, podcast will also be uh, shared on my YouTube channel, Video Gamers Oasis. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't already. We would be very grateful for that. What I've been doing so far, I've been doing a uh, episodic review vlog of the new Hawk Hawkeye uh, TV series on Disney+. Plus. I would suggest that you watch the show first because there are going to be spoilers in this review. We're already doing, uh, we've already finished episode one, the pilot episode. And there's a bit of a, so basically a bit of a uh, recap of what happened so far. So the, just to recap, uh, going back to Kate Bishop as a baby, as a little child, or a after having an argument with the mom, the, the father comes back into the bedroom to tell uh, the, the daughter after she asked, what would, you, what would you do if there was a hurricane? And he said, I would do what I do always do, protect you. So he was uh, a very good, you know, very protective, loving dad. Unfortunately, he dies very early in the show uh, during 2012 during the attack on, on Earth by the Chittahuri. And there's a view of the Avengers Tower from the distance. And she sees uh, her hero, her uh, role model, Hawkeye, battling some Chittahuri uh, with the bow and arrow. And she and he protected her from the attack by the Chittahuri. She from that that moment on, she wanted to be just like Hawkeye. And at the funeral for her dad, she says to her mom, "I need a bow and arrow." And so, fast forward several years later, she 
she goes to that university, that school, and late at night, and shoots an arrow at, the, at that be old bell tower, shoots the bell. Unfortunately, the whole tower collapses. So this is uh, that's just a brief, brief recap of her. And then we switch to the scene with Clint Barton, Hawkeye, eat, having a Christmas dinner at a Chinese restaurant with his family, his mom's, uh, the mom or the husband, the uh, the wife of Hawkeye, Clint Barton, is on a business trip, is not, not able to join them for the meal, but they you know, had a little conversation with her, and he promises his children that he will have a nice Christmas vacation with them, uh, Christmas movies, Christmas games, a lot of fun together, he promises them, and uh, the daughter is very much, uh, the, the oldest, the eldest daughter, daughter is very much a stickler to the promises. She says, Daddy, you promised me that you're going to be home for Christmas. You better keep your promise. So he's, she's very, very much um, accounting for that promise. So many parents can relate to that. How uh, how some children are very much on uh, promises and keeping the promises, especially for the holidays. So moving on, we have a scene with the daughter Pardon me, not daughter. Uh, we have a scene with Kate Bishop and her uh, and her wealthy uh, her wealthy mom. She's at a uh, fundraising event, and she's uh, Kate Bishop is a busser, or I guess a, a porter, or a um, sort of like a uh, mater d at the event wearing all black and she's talking to this old elderly gentleman who turns out to be the uncle pardon me last episode i said father he was not the father the uncle of the the Patton character uh, who happens to be a uh, stepfather her stepfather the, the fiance of her mom of her mom who's a, a widow She's dating this gentleman uh, in, in the uh, previous episode who happens to be the uncle of the mustache gentleman. And they were at a, uh, a wine cellar after the, after the dinner event. They were the wine, in the wine cellar having an auction of all these valuable items, including the sword and the costume of the, the Ronin. Hawkeye's uh, previous incarnation that he was never identified as after the uh, for those who are need a little bit of a recap during the Thana snap Hawkeye uh, Clint Barton lost all his family he became very nihilistic he put on a different costume a hooded mask costume he had a retractable sword he just started uh, making mincemeat of all these Yakuza uh, mobster bosses because he just lost all hope in humanity, became totally nihilistic, became like a, a Punisher like character. Then what happened was all the his family was restored because of the reverse snap by Iron Man from the movie Endgame. And basically, apparently, his costume and sword still exists, so they were selling it at an auction. Uh, Kate Bishop was wearing the costume. She put on the costume, and what happened? Basically, she, uh, she starts kicking ass of all these robbers. These, they were called, by the way, in this episode and the second episode, uh, Hawkeye calls them the jogging, jogging suit mafia. I believe they call track suit mafia. So I, I didn't call them properly. Just wanted to let you know that they're called the track suit mafia. She's kicking ass, taking name. She's a martial artist. She's very. She must be black belt in some kind of martial arts. And what happens later is that she discovers. Uh, just trying to see the gentleman who uh, who is engaged to her her mom. The character is named Jack Dukens, played by Tony Dalton. His uncle is murdered. He finds her. He finds uh, the gentleman uh, dead in in his home with a big blood stain. And so he, 
she's on the loose. Meanwhile, Hawkeye is looking at the news report. Newscaster authorities believe the assailant could be the Ronin. So they've accused the Ronin of the murder, even though it wasn't her. She just was found at the scene. Wasn't found directly at the scene, but they near the scene. So he has, uh, Hawkeye has some major cleanup, cleaning up to do. He can't have that costume uh, and that young lady wearing that costume be running around. So he goes on a mission to clean up uh, the mess that he made and the mess that she made as well. Again, it, it, re it reverts or it recalls back the, you know, the, the days where he was the Ronin and he was a vigilante. So he's, he's looking back and, and the show proceeds. Back where we left off, he finally uh, catches up to Kate Bishop. Hawkeye catches up Kate Bishop in the middle of a tracksuit mob mobster uh, assailant that all these mobsters are attacking him or he rescues her and then comes to approach her in the uh, in the uh, alley takes off her mask and sees that it's Kate Bishop wearing his costume costume and she is his number one fan actually so she's doing it and, and she's amazed to see Hawkeye and she's such a, a fan of the hero so basically they, they move on uh, together and she takes him to her hideaway, her little apartment. Oh, her apartment kind of looks almost like a, uh, a subway cafeteria almost. It's a very open, open kind of concept. And I like her little uh, target board on the wall where she can do her, her uh, bow and arrow practice. She, he wants his costume back, so he will, she goes upstairs, uh, this yeah, stairway upstairs in her bed, bed is, and she changes into her purple costume, you know, like, like in the, uh, in the photo, in the photographs and the uh, posters. She gives him back his costume, they head back, they're, um, they were just about ready to head back, and suddenly, tracksuit mafia, they are, um, attacking the window of Kate Bishop's home. They start throwing glass Molotov cocktails. And there's something really cool happens is the second one that they throw, even though they cause some damage, Hawkeye catches it and throws it back at them. And uh, as their the, the place starts to engulf in flames, uh, Hawkeye's old Ronin costume is still in the fire, and she and but they had to escape immediately. They didn't have time to pick it up. And they're injured from the, the battle they went through. So Hawkeye and Kate Bishop goes to a drug, the local drugstore to pick up some items, some uh, medical first aid uh, ingredients. Uh, so she he takes her to, um, well, they walk to aunt, her aunt's place. Um, or is it Hawkeye's aunt's place? And to keep her safe, for the least of least, because they don't, they're, they're looking for her and he wants to make sure he, she's safe. And meanwhile, Hawkeye goes to the fireman's uh, fire truck. They have arrived at Kate Bishop's hideaway, where it, have, it has basically been in, mostly incinerated by fire. He puts on a costume, puts on the, uh, he basically cosplays as a firefighter, puts on the firefighter's costume to investigate the room or investigate the uh, apartment of Kate Bishop to see if she can, can find the costume before the uh, mobsters find it and he's not able to find it and so he finds it but he does find on the fire trucks window New York City LARPers and he decides to investigate the LARPers because possibly a fireman may have picked up the costume who happens to be a uh, role-playing LARPer, form of role-playing where people, for those not familiar, uh, LARPing is a form of role-playing where uh, people can pretend to be warriors, uh, uh, they can pretend to be wizards, uh, sorcerers, enchantresses, uh, they dress up as knights, and they go into actual some actual battle with fake swords and weapons. There's no injuries involved in LARPing. I've been to uh, uh, Comic-Cons where LARPers congregate or meet 
and they it's a lot of fun they dress up in costumes they have wooden swords and shields and armor and it's a lot like laser tag where you get tagged on the arm on the chest or on the back and those are spots where you get killed or injured and you have points that you can lose and you can and so there's like strict rules on how engagement in these games so he decides to investigate the LARPing, the fireman who happens to be a LARPer, and uh, they're talking some more, He's putting some first aid on himself. Uh, Clint Barton proceeds to put some first aid on Kate Bishop's head because she didn't uh, properly clean her wound. And then he looks, uh, this is interesting, She so, so meanwhile, well, I think she heads out to see her mom. Hawkeye, uh, Clint Barton looks at a uh, TikTok, appears to be a TikTok, or a short little video of a gentleman, African American gentleman, who has the Ronin costume and is acting all gangsta with it. And he's acting, when you see me sneaking and creeping, it's too late. You're already dead, ninja style. And so he has a, has a deep breath of exasperation. He has to go talk to the gentleman who has taken his costume so he can clean up the, uh, this mess that, he, that has been created. He heads, decides to head up to a LARPing event. So he's, <clears throat> he's, before he goes to the LARPing event, he goes to drop off his kids. Where I think they're, t they're taking a taxi somewhere safe. I'm not sure if they're taking it to the mom. But, you know, he's promising the daughter, I'm going to see you again, don't worry. The daughter's very, very stickler with dad's promises, very, very um, obsessed. I like that poster, Creature of the uh, of the Lost Galaxy, with Creature of the Dark, Galac Dark Galaxy, that's pretty cool. Uh, for a moment there, I thought it was a creature from the Black Lagoon, but it's some kind of fic fictitious sci-fi poster. From, an, from, uh, from the 1950s that never really existed, but it was, I like the creative idea. So there, he, they look, they have, uh, Kate Bishop and Hawkeye are looking at the television. They see the news report says the mask is from last night's auction robbery. Uh, they still uh, accuse him of doing it, or the, Hawk, the Ronin. And so, Kate Bishop and Hawkeye leave their apartment and what's interesting is that she is such a fanboy, fangirl you could say of Hawkeye. She wants to be just like him. He really doesn't want to help her. He really, Hawkeye wants to you know, be on his way so he can be back with his family and move on with his life. She's very obsessed with him and she says, you know, I got your number. So he says, I'm going, I'm out of here. So she heads back to her mom's office drops off her things at her mom's office, wants to talk with her mom, have a discussion, and lo and behold, it is none other but Jack Duquesque, the played by Tony Dalton, the, uh, the mom of Kate Bishop's uh, fiance. They're engaged to be married. He is obviously going to be a villain in the story. I get the sense that there's something about her, something about the gentleman that Kate Bishop does not trust. Her, her spidey sense is tingling, so to speak. Not literally spidey sense, but her intuition. And so they're going to have dinner together. He's going to cook a dinner. Meanwhile, uh, Fred, um, meanwhile, Clint Barton is at the LARPing, the New York City LARPers event outdoors. It's all snowy. And he sees the, 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 the African-American gentleman who happens to be, I believe, a firefighter wearing the costume acting all tough and the event is hosted by by police officers uh, ambulance and um, firefighters it's all emergency uh, emergency uh, heroes who who take it together at this club and they're all larping got dressed up in medieval and fantasy costumes the lady who's sort of like a lady of the door she's sort of like a guardian of the gates she says you can't proceed unless you uh, play by the rules you have to dress up in a costume and play the game and if you want to get uh, access to that gentleman in the costume so he puts on it's kind of funny puts on a costume he signs at the bottom line 
and he gets a plastic sword, a wooden sword, whatever it is. It's not harmful. And he puts on the armor and he proceeds, all these people are hitting weapons at each other, pretending that they're in battle. He just tapping left and right, all these fighters. He just, he's basically uh, executing one after another. They are no match for his fighting style, even in LARPing. So he's just slicing them up, not literally. He's playing the game with his fake sword. And, and they're all, you know, they're, they're good sports. They're all pretending to die. And he's heading toward the gentleman who has his costume. He says, wait, and the, the guy says, wait a minute, aren't you Hawkeye? And he, he responds, I'm not trying to cause a scene here, all right? Out of respect to whatever the hell this is, but I'm plumb out of patience. You've got two choices. You could take this pretend sword. I could take this pretend sword You pretend to die and I take that suit, or I'm really gonna punch you. And you're gonna fall down and I'm gonna take that suit. And he takes off his mask and says, just let me kill you. And I'll give you the suit. Oh, come on, man. You're a superhero in real life. This is as close as I'm ever going to get to being one. Just work with me. I'll Let me kill you. And Clint Bart is reluctantly agrees to a, 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 a um, trial by combat. And he says, and I, uh, he says, response, and I fought Thanos. And this is what it's brought me. Very, kind of a humiliating thing. Okay, all right, cool. So... Just make it quick, yeah. So he later on he he battles the gentleman for the suit, and uh, back at Kate Barton's uh, at the office, uh, a police officer calls her and say that they wanted to ask a few questions. Her home was found charred, and they wanted to ask uh, what happened and. She says, um, I wasn't home, thankfully, but I'm fine. And the police officer responds, Mind tell me where you were last night? So she agrees to talk with the police officer the next day in the morning before she comes to work, because she was at work at the moment. Back at the uh, LARPing event, Preparing, uh, preparing the battle. They're all ho uh, hovering around for a trial by combat, and it's really funny because uh, the gentleman who's wearing the ro the Ronin suit is battling Clint Barton, and Clint Barton basically lets him win. Pretends to to be defeated. They're so clashing plastic swords. Or wooden swords, whatever they are, they're not they're not real weapons. And he pretends to go down, and she and he gets the uh, the championship uh, left arm raised, and we'll burn the corpse. They all yell, and he takes off his armor, waiting patiently. And eventually, what happens is the the gentleman. Who I believe was a firefighter. He gets he gives his costume back. Says, I mean. He thanks him. Here's a costume. I said, this means a lot to me that we I defeated you. And what does he say? I shall be regaling my countrymen with this tale for many years to come. He's a real LARPer nerd. You can tell. You call, you call me Clint. I can call you Clint? Yeah. You can t take this to the front door desk. Or he gives, that gives him his, his sword back, and armor. He wants to get it out of there as soon as possible. He thanks him, and he heads on out of the LARPing event. And what happens basically is he's back at, uh, he's thinking about, he's talking to his wife, who is uh, babysitting or entertaining the children for Christmas. He wants so badly to spend time with his family but he's unable to see them at the moment because he's in a very, a very sticky situation. He's a bit of a pickle, you could say. So he wishes them a Merry Christmas and hope to see him as soon. Meanwhile, at Kate, Bart Kate um, Bishop's place, so they're Kate Bishop's mom's place, they're having a, 
old-fashioned dinner cooked by the uh, cooked by Jack the, the t to be um, stepfather of Kate Bishop but there's something about him she just doesn't trust and they go in a bit of a there's a lot of uh, passive-aggressive uh, remarks made by the daughter so they agree both of them after dinner to have a fencing tournament and right in the middle of the, the foyer of the uh, mom's wealthy home pardon me the mom's rich home or very classy home so they uh, Jack uh, Jack says let me change into my costume they're both in their fencing costume traditional fencing costumes She's wearing, they're both wearing the, the face guard and they have their traditional fencing sword. And they're both pretty good. Uh, however, Jack is actually holding back. And she's just striking forward a lot. And she continues to do a fencing uh, move. On, and he just lets her defeat her once, one after another. It, he strikes him in the chest, not a real sword, obviously. It's not enough to hurt him. Because they're all wearing armor. He says, wow, you are good. Kate, don't let me win, Jack. I wouldn't. Go ahead. Go again. So they, do, they do it again. They're fencing while the mom is watching with a glass of wine in the background. And they're, they're having a battle. Oh, caught me again. Wow, you are good, Jack says. I prefer a fiancé with four limbs, please, the mom inter inter uh, interjects. Kate says, stop letting me win. I, Jack says, I'm not honest. I mean, two-time state champ, right? Kate scoffs. So they, she's, he's basically humoring Kate, making her win all the time. And they, they meet swords again. Kate's grunting and keeps uh, striking forward, stabs him again. Of course, not literally stabbing. It's a fencing tournament. He says, why are you, what are you hiding, Jack? Takes, he takes off her hel his helmet. Jack takes off his helmet. Nothing. I'm an open book. Right, darling? And that's when Kate, with her helmet off, strikes toward Jack's head. And uh, the wife sa the mom says, Yelps! Kate, what are you doing? And he, uh, does he disarm, basically? So while she, she strikes toward Jack's face, attempting to catch him off guard, with a flick of his wrist, she, he disarms Kate's hand and takes the sword out of her hand. So he's a very a skillful swords, uh, a, a swordsman. And they're having, later on they have, the mom has an argument with the daughter. How many people get murdered by sword each year in New York? And they're basically, they're trying to settle, settle this issue. The, mom, the daughter has an issue with the mom dating Jack. There's something about Jack he, he doesn't trust. And so Jack get, offers offers a candy, a butterscotch candy, and that kind of triggers her. She, she says, I'm going to get out of here. I have to go to work. And the mom says, you work for me? Well, yeah, I'm, I have something I have to get at. And meanwhile, Hawkeye is with his bow. He has his bow in his right hand and his sheath of arrows. And, um, and he's beating the jogging suit mafia again tracksuit mafia and they're heading out and they hit him in the, in the belly and they come to abduct him after they put a, a bag over his head they come to take him away and Kate Bishop's in the taxi heading out There's something about he has to investigate Clint and she has a tracking device or a tracking uh, signal on her on Clint's uh, phone so she's tracking uh, using a tracking uh, Bishop security, which is actual uh, technology that her mom uh, owns in her business. Meanwhile, Hawkeye is being, is in a, what appears to be a bowling alley or some kind of uh, shopping mall abandoned. And uh, the tracksuit mafia are all shining some bright lights on him while he's tied up in a chair and they're interrogating him. He's, he says, I'm not the guy you're looking for. Someone else you're looking for, it's not me. And in drops from the ceiling, Kate Bishop in her 
purple costume and art bow and arrow and she says I'm here to rescue you I guess and they're both tied up to uh, to, to these uh, children's you know automatic uh, equestrian machines you can get shopping see at shopping malls she, uh, Kate Bishops on a X1 uh, silver rocket machine toy those equestrian toys and uh, Hawkeye is mounted on a purple purple haired unicorn and they're tied up and they're going to do some more more interrogation one of the one of the lead, uh, the head head uh, members the, the leader of the trench the um, jogging suit mafia they go into a room it's a red room and there is a, a mysterious lady in the room there's pounding speakers playing some kind of tribal uh, uh, world music, but she's not able to hear it. She just feels, feels the speakers with her hand. And I was wondering, who is this mysterious lady? <coughs> she turns her head, appears to be a Native American lady. And the leader of the uh, drug and suit mafia says, we have them both. And she comes, she's, she's obviously their leader. She's the head honcho. We have them, and I believe, and I looked it up. Who is this lady at the end of the season two, the, the, the episode uh, two of season one, Hawkeye? And I did look it up. Um, big uh, spoiler: her name is Echo. She is a Native American uh, believe, a hero, or I'm not sure, a hero or anti-hero, but she's an interesting character in the store, in the comic books, in the Marvel comic books. She is a Native American, and she's totally deaf, but she's able to mimic fighting styles very much like in uh, Black Widow that character the uh, with the skull mask very much like Taskmaster and there you have it that is the uh, that is episode two of the show I had a good time it was uh, it was a good a bit of a thrill ride not totally thrilling but I had a enjoy I was my interest was kept throughout the show I had a good time and uh, that was the end of episode two Two. If you enjoyed this uh, recap of Hawkeye Season 1, Episode 2, leave your comments below. Follow me on uh, Spotify for Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast. Also, the video, this audio will be also be shared on my YouTube channel, Video Gamers Oasis, on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. Stay tuned for more content on my podcast, and I'll talk to you again real soon. I hope you have an awesome holiday season coming up. Until next time, bye. Video Gamers Oasis Playful Podcast Credits Musical Intro Friday Night Gaming One Hour Mix Number One Free Use No Copyright Synthwave New Retro Outrun EDM YouTube Channel DGDTV Dash Diamond Gaming TV Stock footage video game screen. YouTube channel RAR R A W R Designs. Video arcade desktop wallpaper. Pixario.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>